Hello and welcome to another Cash Cow build in the world of GT7. And for those of you who do follow the channel, you'll already know, of course, I've done a ton of these to race at Le Mans in the half hour race, up to 700 points, and you can get about 1.65 million per hour. It's basically the best all round method. There are a couple of others which other people prefer, Tokyo or the hour endurance at Spa. It's down to you, but this is just the one I like to use it for. Now the car is of course the Veyron. There are three things I wanna point out before we get into the tune, all of which are important. Number one, you'll probably feel the need to put a comment about my oil condition. I like to run it down to bad just because it makes me feel like I'm getting a good use out of the car. I've done over 840 miles in this Veyron, all of which pretty much were at Le Mans. So this really is my favorite one to use. Secondly, the Veyron is not for everyone. So why am I doing a tune for a car that is difficult to buy because you have to be invited to do so, expensive at 2 million credits for an invitation only car, and three, why would you just use a Veyron at all when surely the Racing Group 4 version could be better? Or I mean, just why use a Veyron? It's kind of known for being a bad handling car. Well, for me, it's just a car that I love. Over the years, I've loved the Veyron more and more. It's actually the car I would love to review the most in beards and cars here on the channel. Not like that's going to happen anytime soon. But I love using it in the game because it's just easy. It's such a low effort car. It's phenomenally quick. The fuel pit stop situation isn't that impressive, but again, it's a half hour race, as I'll show you in a second for those who are unfamiliar with what I'm talking about. So it doesn't really matter how many pit stops you have to do, as long as the car is quick enough to win. For those who don't know how to get it, you have to win an invitation from a spin to be allowed to buy the car. That's a bit stupid. And there's no argument from me that it is stupid, but that's the way it is, unfortunately, in the game. So when you get that invitation, you can then go to the Bugatti dealer and buy the car for two million. I'm not sure if you can win the Veyron on a spin. You might be able to, but I'm not sure. Now, some of the things that I've fitted, you don't need to, because I've got this as a speed build and a 700 point build. So you want the stage one weight. Then as far as the club sports section, you definitely want the power restrictor and you definitely want the ballast fitted. As far as the computer, you will definitely need that fitted as well. The turbo you don't have to fit. Again, I've got it because I've got a couple of different tunes on the car, but for this purpose, you don't need the high RPM turbo. You definitely do want the fully customized LSD or limited slip diff. Stage three weight, of course. As far as the racing stuff, we've got the intercooler, we've got the silencer. Again, you don't necessarily need those though. I've got ceramic brakes on this one under the extreme section, but I would actually recommend the normal racing ones because they are cheaper and they're just as good. And as far as the pads, of course, you want racing ones as well. Fully customized suspension is essential on this car, as is the torque vectoring center diff. We'll get into that more in a second in the tuning section. The clutch and flywheel, the transmission you actually don't need for this tune. I have not got that fitted for 700 points. It, it's basically a four speed transmission in the case of this car, if you leave it stock and it's good for up around 180, 190 miles an hour, even on the leanest fuel setting, you definitely want your stage four weight and you absolutely want racing hard tires. Now for the extreme section, again, I've got NOS. You can't use NOS at Le Mans so you don't need it. That's just for my other tune again, so you don't have to drop the 100 grand if you don't want to. Intermediate tires, heavy wet tires. As I've said before, it always rains for me in the Le Mans race, but I still haven't bothered because it's a four wheel drive car. You know, it's got four wheel drive, it's got racing hards. You just don't need intermediates. You still have to brake a little bit sooner, etc. And of course you can go off the track, but it's nothing you can't cope with. Then we'll go back to the garage, of course, and I'll show you the tuning that I've done. Now, there are other things you could do to the Veyron, the body kit, the wing. I'll leave that down to you. You could turn it into like a full-on race car if you want to, but I haven't bothered to do that. As far as the tyres fit your racing hards, for the suspension, it is crucial to change the ride height on the Veyron. Just like it was back in Gran Turismo 6, probably in GT5 as well, but I can't remember, the Veyron has an automatic levelling system. So when you hit a certain speed, it lowers the suspension and becomes really difficult to turn. That's not great to work with. So by raising it a bit to 80 mil in the case of this one, it counteracts that effect. So it's still highly maneuverable. For the anti-roll, that's on five. We've increased the compression on the dampers up to 38 for the front and the back. Then for the expansion, 45 on the front and the back. The frequency isn't too crazy, 2.4 front and rear. Negative camber, 
None at all, completely neutral there. Completely neutral toe as well. As far as the diff, I've got 10 on initial torque, as you can see, five all round for acceleration and braking, and then that crucial torque vectoring center diff is set on, as you can see, 50-50. Now you can take it down to be basically a full-on rear-wheel drive car if you want to, and of course you can do that while driving as well. I prefer to have it on 50-50 for two reasons. One, you just get great grip at all times, but even more importantly, in the rain, you get way more grip as well. As far as the gearbox, as I said, totally stock. Then the power restrictor you want set on 99%, and the ECU you want set on 70%. That'll bring you down to, with an oil change, I think it's 706 horsepower, I want to say, which is more than enough to be fast at Le Mans for the 700 point level. And you do want the full 200 kilos of ballast, which I would recommend putting 35% toward the front, which evens out that 50-50 weight distribution. You cannot adjust the downforce, at least with the stock stuff. And then for the rest, as you can see, most of it isn't fitted, because as I said, that's for a different build. So copy what's there as far as what is and isn't fitted, and you should be good to go. Now, for those who don't know the race that I'm talking about, and I know that most of you will, so you can just see the car in action in a second. But for those who don't know, you'll need to unlock Le Mans, aka Circuit de la Sarthe, where the 24 Heures du Mans is held, which is here in the European section, and you want this one, the WTC 700 point event. Half hour race, the fuel is on high, the tires wear out quick, 700 points, no NOS, and you've got to have racing tires. Now, as we move over into the race itself, you'll be able to see what the car is like in action, and of course, the advantage of four wheel drive makes it really easy to work with in the rain. There are a lot of cars which are easy to work with though, so like I said earlier on, I'm not even coming close to claiming that this is the best car to use. It's not. It's not for everyone. The Veyron is bigger and heavier, it's more sluggish, but I just love the Veyron, so I love using it. It's easy to win with. Now as far as strategy, what I would recommend doing is first of all, and some people won't like this, set your AI difficulty on the lowest, because it makes no difference to the payout whatsoever, and if some people feel the need to put the AI on the hardest difficulty to try and prove something, I'm not really sure who you're trying to impress, given that the, the AI in Gran Turismo isn't exactly Sophie yet. So set it on the lowest, give yourself an easier time, this is not about fun, and it's not about proving anything, it's just about earning money. So you'll make it so much easier for yourself where you can actually just drive the car and enjoy it. But if you want to put it higher, that's down to you. The main reason why I'm saying that is because some people say, oh, these tunes don't work, the cars are too close. Well, 10 times out of 10, that's always because you've got the AI set on higher. So in practice, what I would recommend doing, you will absolutely need to pit in every two laps. So it's about the same as most other supercars in that regard. You want to set your fuel as lean as possible. You can use the right and left, of course, toggles to move through those in the event. Set that all the way up to, what is it? No, all the way down to one, I believe it is, to have it on the leanest so your fuel will last longer. And then when you pit in, the strat strategy even, that I would recommend is first pit in, skip the tires, because you usually don't need them at that point, and then fill it with fuel. Then the second time you pit in, f fit the tires and the fuel, and then that should line you up just right to come up to the finish line, and if you maintain a similar pace to what I am, you'll be able to literally just sit at the finish line for like two minutes, but you'll be over two and a half minutes ahead of anything else, and you can make sure that the race doesn't take any longer than 30 minutes, because obviously, if you cross the finish line before the race ends, you'll have to do an entire another lap for no reason. So sit at the finish line as long as you've got a big enough lead, roll across the line, and it's an easy win. And of course, ultimately, if you do it that way, as I like to every time, you're looking at 1.65 million an hour, which adds up pretty quick. For me personally, I like to try and do this event maybe once a day or so, and then by the time the new car pack or, you know, update drops, I've more often than not got enough cash to work with. So that's my personal favorite car to use. If you want to check out others, they are here on the channel. TVR Tuscan, Camaro, Red Bull Jr., a ton of other ones which aren't even out yet and some which are. So of course, check those out. And the whole point of this race is to keep it varied and have fun with lots of different cars. Because the beauty of Le Mans in this event is you can win it with so many different approaches. So give me your thoughts down below. Do you already like using the Veyron? Are you going to try out this tune? And of course, stick around on the channel for more. But for now, as always, 
Thanks for watching.